Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about armor in AD&D. And armor is an interesting question. We talked about weapons before, all the different weapon properties. And armor is a little bit different in that in armor we're more tempted to think directly about the armor class as the only thing that matters and more, more so than we think about the damage being the main thing in weapons. But I hope to, to show that there are many, many factors that come into play with armor and that that 5% different chance to be hit is actually kind of a smaller factor. Now, the factors in armor are scattered all over the books, right? Armor class is easy to find. It's right there in the player's handbook. Cost is easy to find as well. Uh, relatively cheap, then moderately expensive, and then extremely expensive for plate. The encumbrance is buried in the Dungeon Master's Guide, where you finally see where how the movement rate um, starts to affect your um, is affected by your armor. You have to go all the way, and so all these these factors, um, as well as donning armor, which you don't find until you get into the Wilderness Survival Guide. Um, all of that, I like the Book of Seaward version, has all of that in one big table, plus a bunch of extra armor types. And so you've got the armor class, you got the cost, you got the encumbrance, you got the movement change, and the time to don the armor all in one big table. And so that's what I like. So I have grouped those together I hope that's big enough to be readable. And as you can see, several of these don't show up in, in the core AD&D books. And there's some differences. The so Book of Seaward, in particular, has higher costs for most things, or many things. And the time to dawn is not as linear as is suggested in the, in the Wilderness Survival Guide. So let's talk about some of these factors besides the armor class, right? Everyone knows the armor class, the higher the armor class, the better, right? Well, it's, it makes a difference. It's a 5% chance, lower chance to get hit per point, but it's it's not, um, maybe not as huge a difference as we sometimes treat it as. So first, let's let's talk about cost, right? So I'm looking at the book of C-word numbers here. For relatively cheap, you can be getting some pretty high armor classes, but as you get to the plate mail and the dwarven plate and the field plate and the full plate, those prices skyrocket. And at a cost, there's there's a lot of other options when you start getting that high in cost, right? You could be buying uh, a longbow, right, which is in extremely effective, or you could be buying a war horse, right? A war horse, fight, a uh, heavy war horse, costs half as much as seaward plate mail, and fights as a third level fighter with three attacks around. Okay, that seems worth it, right? Not to mention the speed and carrying capacity. So when we're thinking about the cost of our armor, at some point it might be worth it to buy something besides that extra 5% chance not to be hit in the armor. Um, talking about encumbrance, uh, depending on how much strength you have, even some of these lighter armors could significantly slow you down. Maybe, maybe you want some of these options in Book of Seaward, like the breastplate that weighs a lot less, or the brigandine shirt, to to be able to keep that speed. Maybe you're willing to pay extra to get something lighter, like the banded mail instead of the splint mail, just to save a few pounds. Encumbrance is important because, to the extent that that you are carrying a bunch of weight on your back in the form of armor. That's less food you can carry for the trip to the dungeon. That's less treasure than you can carry out of the dungeon. And so encumbrance is something to, to consider um, when thinking about buying the heaviest armor you can buy. Maybe maybe there's something, um, something you care about a little bit more. Movement speed is huge. In particular, if you don't have a horse yet to, to carry you there, reducing your movement speed can significantly increase your travel time. And once you're in the dungeon where you wouldn't have a horse anyway. It means traversing more slowly, it means more wandering monsters, it means less ability to move around the fight and, and get to where you're needed, and it means significantly less ability to retreat from fights. If you get into trouble in this plate mail where you're moving at half speed, you're going to be significantly less capable of breaking free of that fight than if you had just stuck with half plate or banded mail. And so that movement speed can really, really matter. 
and I've had some people mention stealth as well. Um, I consider movement in the dungeon to be moving at a pace where you're quiet, and that's why the guy in plate mail can't move along at a super slow, creeping pace as quickly as, as somebody in lighter armor is because he's keeping his armor quiet. But as soon as you break that and start moving a little bit faster, oh yeah, there'll be stealth concerns. <clears throat> and then there's the time to don the armor. The time to don the ar armor really comes up in in the Wilderness Survival Guide. It comes up because they're already talking about um, the effects of armor on resting, on, on your ability to sleep, right? So any type of heavy armor means that you need to spend more time trying to sleep in order to get the sleep that you need. And so if you're taking that armor off, whether to sleep or because it's hot outside and you don't want to be wearing the armor out in the heat, then the time it takes to put it on really matters. And do you have a squire there who can help you get it on faster? Again, I like the book of C-word donning times. They're all cut in half with assistance, right? And so it's worth it to have your porters prepared and trained to help throw somebody's armor on. But if that if it's one of these heavier armors where you're potentially taking up to 10 rounds, five with the help of someone putting the armor on, that's almost like you might as well not have the armor, right? Many fights are over that quickly. So the time to don the armor really matters. And potentially the time to doff the armor, right? If, you, if you're wearing a lighter armor during travel and then you want to switch to something heavier, but most likely you would just engage in the lighter armor in that case. Again, there's the consideration when traveling that that some armor gets very, very hot, right? And so you could potentially, if you're wearing plate mail or, or full plate or field plate, any of these, um, be burning yourself up trying to, trying to, in hot, humid weather, trying to travel in your heavy armor. So obviously that's, that's something to consider. And of course, I'm not going to claim that, that there are no benefits of of this, the armor class, bumping you up by one, right? It bumps you up by more than one, really. Uh, I don't have the the weapon tables prepared, but there are a lot of weapons, particularly ones that I tend to use to model monster attacks, that have an extra minus one penalty against uh, armor class three that they don't have against armor class four. And so that means that you're not getting just a 5% bonus from that extra one point. You're getting a 10% bonus. However, that also means that maybe what you really want to be doing is adding a shield and, and switching off of a two-handed weapon so that you can get that 10% bonus without having to sacrifice your speed so you can still be wearing, um, for example, mail and plate from the C-word list. Again, I love the C-word list, the book of C-word list from Rick Stump. <laughs> Just the number of extra armor types that he's added to this list that, that help fill it out, right? So you've got cheaper options, faster options. Um, at the various levels and of course all of this goes out the window when you find magic armor right because you're probably going to want to wear the magic armor it weighs less it encumbers less and it's giving you more bang for the buck at a different level right uh, so thanks for watching i hope that this has helped make more careful consideration when choosing armor as a player and some of the considerations to keep in mind as a dungeon master when your players have have picked their armor I really love the amount of variety in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons as far as the armor goes and how how the choices really matter. Um, lately I've had players trying to pick armor to buy and, and it's been interesting to see the choices, right? Who's willing to go a little bit cheaper but be slowed down and just count on winning all their fights and not having to retreat in the dungeon. So keep that in mind as you are playing your games and keep on adventuring. Bye.